<laughs> the idea is not to keep the, your pet caged inside. Mm. It is that the open area is where they will spend most of their time during the day. Right now, I do boarding. I do training, all types of training, whether it is a behavioral issue, whether it's basic obedience or aggression mm. or any sort of an issue that you can think of. I deal with that. Hello everyone, welcome back to another vlog. We are here at Divine Paws Resort and Training Center. Trust me, this is a heaven for dogs. They offer a range of services from dog onboarding, behavior modifications and dog trainings as well. The place is run by my friend and he is also a dog trainer, a certified dog trainer. We'll talk about it later in the video but uh, Let's not make you guys wait. Let's go in and check it out. He didn't finish no extras, don't get into specifics. Wave maker, I came up at the Pacific. No, you don't trust what you can see. Some things are left to believe in. So, as you can see, this is the entrance, right? And you can already hear a lot of dogs barking. So, as you enter, you can see beautiful paintings right here which is drawn by a friend of ours who is here right here, we'll meet them you can see this is the name of the place and you can see the different dogs that they have with the names I think this is Brandy you can see a few other dogs here this is the office which is yet to be constructed a bit this is the office area hey son hi hello you can see the owner is right here. Okay. Oh, that's right. Big shot for the camera. So you can meet the owner of this place and a friend of mine. Hello. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. <laughs> this is Priscilla who drew all these paintings. So what's what's this dog's name? His name is uh, Turtur and he's a Belgian Malinois. Belgian Malinois. It's very rare to find these dogs in this color. With a little bit of a white, majority black and a little bit of fawn over here. Extremely rare to get. <laughs> he's a caretaker here, he takes care of all the dogs. Uh, two beagles as well the other big. That is Louis and this is? Yeah. This is Leah. Leah is showing the bum. <laughs> yeah. Leah like, yeah, I'm posing. <laughs> Here you can see the kennel. The right. These are the kennels. There is a capacity of around 50, 50 dogs. Oh. Right, you can hear all the dogs barking. But this is the compound. Here. The dogs are like free. They can have their time. And they are surrounded by sheets. Let's not make him wait, he's holding the door for me. Let's go and meet the other dogs. <laughs> Mikey is our resident boarder. He's been here for almost a year right now. Mm -hmm. Along with his sister Saira, who we'll meet a little bit later. Okay. Viru. Viru Hi. is another Rottweiler I'm training. He's over here for protection work. <laughs> He will be shifted to our uh, the offsite farm where he will be doing the guarding work along with his brother Jet. Saira, our oldest resident over here, she's Mikey's brother. And she's also been here for almost over a year with me. Next we have Jet. Jet is an again a rock dealer. He's also getting trained for protection work and he'll also be going to our farm site property for protection work over there. Oh, the same dialogue. I know you want to play with him afterwards, not now. Come on, let's go. The dog is sad though. <laughs> let's go. Please come on. No. Oh, see, this is the fully completed kennel. So you'll be doing this with all the kennels, right? Yes, all kennels will have this design going. And we'll be doing a, what do you say, tire flow. It will come and everything. Okay. Yes, there's a lot of work to be done. But I believe in pacing myself. I don't want to do things hastily. On quality, so I want to take my time with it, get it done step by step, and make sure I'm getting, getting the good quality that I promise. This is Charlie, he's been with me for almost three months now. He's a training dog, he came here with major aggression issues. As you can 
see right now a really good ball that he can play with. But earlier his complaints were he's almost bit about five six people. He's bit my caretaker as well, and he's taking a chunk out of him at two. But now with all the training and the require the what do you say the handling that he requires, this is how he is now. Earlier you would not be allowed to stand this close to him. He would reach out and bite your leg. So forward. That's the kind of guy he was, and this is him now after two and a half months of intensive training for him. Awesome. But you can't see something. So tell me bro like how how like what certifications do you have like how did you get into this dog industry so um i have a igp level 1 certification mm -hmm. which is uh, affiliated with the republic of the czech republic mm -hmm. so it's an internationally valid certification and igp is one of the most uh, inclusive dog sport events it is not your uh, dog beauty pageants that are predominant in our uh, in our indian setting but this, these events majorly take part in uh, parts of Europe. IGP is basically, it, it includes a lot of aspects of training. There is protection work in it, that is the bite work and everything. Then there is tracking work in it, which is the sniffing part of it. And there is obedience. This is one exercise where, you know, once you've completed the course, you put your dog on a sit and a long stay. Meaning, if your dog has the level of, uh, what do you say, obedience, he will stay there for five minutes while the other contender is doing their course. That is the level of obedience a dog needs to have to clear IGP level one. Hmm. And there are three levels to it with increasing difficulty. So there's IGP one, two, and three. So uh, as of now, I'm an IGP level one coach. So like, uh, why did you start this place? And like, what sets you apart from other normal dog trainers? So um, this is purely a passion fueled business venture that I've gotten into. From the time I was three, I've had uh, my first pet. And for most of my life, I've had them around me. And this is the one thing that has always brought me joy. And uh, in 2020 is when I did my training course. And around that time is when I got home tipsy. And she is the reason for all of this. She's up there on the wall. <laughs> and she's the main reason it's, I got into the It's not the other tipsy guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the dog. <laughs> tipsy is my white boxer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a boxer tipsy. <laughs> So, yeah, there were a lot of challenges I faced while having the, my pets earlier. I had about four boxes at a time and it was a little difficult managing them. And there are certain areas that I've made mistakes and which I learned much later. So I did not want to make those mistakes while raising Tipsy. So that's when I joined this course and I started with training her. And then I started freelancing training all my, all the people that I know, if they have pets, I started training with them. It started going well. So then I started as, I, I worked almost for two years as a freelance trainer. So I would go to people's house, anybody who had a requirement, any sort of requirement, I would go to their house, finish it under 10 sessions. And that's when I realized that, you know, this is something that is putting a little money in my pocket and is keeping me happy. And ultimately, that's what I want to do in my life. I want to, I want to make the little money, I want to be happy doing it. So that is where, that's the origin of Divine Pause. So what's your, what's your inspiration behind you know, making such a beautiful artwork that took so much time. Like, yeah, can you tell like how much time this took? The inspiration behind it was um, I, I had a uh, dog who passed away, Jack, and um, he was here and he's boarded with me, and um, he really, you know, he was very important in my life. And when I lost him, uh, it was a very difficult thing to process. And uh, I think for any artist, your uh, predominant way of processing grief or any heavy emotion is through art and uh, he came to me with the idea when the construction was going on and he said hey I want to have this wall painted my only thing is it should have the logo the name of course as well as he wanted tipsy to be on it and I said okay and just you know the, the fact that I had recently lost a dog is I came up with the idea that uh, why not include all of the dogs you've had because they have played a significant role in who you've become today and in the fact that you have dedicated your life to your dogs and to other people's dogs so why not you know take all of them and kind of put them together and paint this entire wall with it now the time limit of course you know to put the entire idea together and um, all he had were very old photos of most of the dogs to sit down, sketch it out, send it to him, make changes, each individual dog and then to bring it together into one piece with every connecting detail. I think that took a month mm -hmm. and once I had the final look of how I wanted things, I freehand sketched everything with pencil which took around two weeks and then painted everything which took another two weeks. So actual work took a month but you know the entire back end of it took uh, two months overall. But it was a it was a very fun process. It was, mm -hmm. and somewhere it really helped me process the grief of losing my own dog. So beautiful. 
Like even the even the board outside that that also was painted by Bruce Lee. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. So what are your plans like after this? Like uh, you're with this place all on your own, right? And yes. Yeah. So what are your plans after this? So uh, as of now, this is a 5,000 square feet property, mm -hmm. and in which the kennels are about you know six by six inside. That's six by six feet, and have only 24 kennels. The idea is not to keep the your pet caged inside. Mm -hmm. It is that you know, the open area is where they will spend most of their time during the day. And only the only the training dogs will spend most of the time in the kennel. When the training time is there, they come outside, they get trained, and they go back in. So that's a that's a routine we follow here. And very soon we'll be adding another portion, another say about 1,200 square feet to this property. And that 1,200 square feet is going to be something like a is going to have a swimming pool and it's going to have some water slides and water jets and stuff like that. Oh, so you. that is going to be like a proper resort feeling. Is it going to be a small mini, you know, dog uh, water park? situation where you know you bring the pet over you spend your day over here you can chill in the water with them so that is the plan that is the end goal with this facility over here awesome oh yeah one last thing i forgot to ask this yeah, yeah what now services do you offer here right now so right now i do boarding i do training all types of training whether it is a behavioral issue whether it's basic obedience or aggression hmm. or any sort of an issue that you can think of i deal with that and with the boarding and the training thing, so what I do is um, I come, I offer consultation, I meet the dog before I take it for boarding or training or anything. I make sure that the dog is comfortable with me and I'm comfortable <coughs> with the pet, mm -hmm. right? And after that, we move ahead with the plan of action. Like, you know, there are easy ways to do the training and there are long term ways of doing the training. Mm -hmm. So I go, we'll go over with all of this with the pet parent, uh, make sure that they're mm -hmm. the method of training that I'm going to opt with with them. Right. So uh, I do boarding, training and I do pick up and drop service also. So you don't have to worry about driving all the way over here. That's mm -hmm. not an issue at all. I do the pick up and drop. Everything can be eaten. So this goes to all types of dogs, right? Doesn't matter. All types all of dogs, all, all across Bangalore. All, <laughs> all shapes, all sizes, all breeds. Awesome. So I guess that's it guys for in today's video. If you guys have any questions, mention it in the comments. I'll be putting the location and your phone number so that you can contact him anytime you want. So that's it guys, bye from everyone, so everybody say ta 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 ba 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 No need try, we just go with the motions Close your eyes, ease your mind for a moment Anyway Why do you see her? Look at the camera I actually look at the <laughs> Along with strength and weakness. With <laughs> 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 your weakness turn to your strengths. <laughs> so <laughs> 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 Trippin' out your whole serenity So you can miss me with the negativity And you can witness all the possibilities 